Hi, my name is Marsha Clack and I work as Family Community Engagement Manager at Phoenix High School, which is in White City. As you can see, it's the sixth most deprived area in the country. We have a high crime rate. One in three of our adults have no qualifications. High obesity rate, 35 different languages spoken, 56 special needs. If it's a free school meal, I apologise. So the history of our Family and Community Engagement Department. It was started over five years ago with one member of staff. I probably took it over about four and a half years ago in its infancy. We're very lucky to have a dedicated family learning area, which consists of a classroom, activity area, and a small meeting room. We also have computers for the adults to come in and use whenever they like. So what are our outward facing goals? We want to connect with all aspects of the Phoenix family, aunts, uncles, friends, cousins, and we want to create partnerships with local businesses, such as Queen Park Rangers, the Met Police, and also local charities, such as Stoneput Services and Hampshire's Community Garden. We want to establish Phoenix as the hub of the local community. So many of our adults have very negative memories of school themselves, so one of the barriers we felt is learning. So we decided to start some soft activities, such as flower arranging, family cooking sessions, family learning sessions on Saturday afternoons, things like golf, even sessions on our farm. Just getting them through the door was a major barrier. Once we set this up, we started what we call hard activities. We started slowly to introduce ESOL, food hygiene certificates, numeracy, basic literacy. We're very proud that our adults this year just on their first GCSEs, 15 of them just passed English and Maths. And due to the closure of our local community centre, we're going to become a hub of local adult learning. So what's the impact of all of this? 85% of them, after pre- and post-evaluation, said their confidence and self-esteem has improved. 75% say they use their learning in their lives. 80% of the parents, it's more important to me, that they are more able to help their child with their home learning at home. So we're very lucky at Phoenix to have a three-quarter acre farm and learning zone, which is almost unique in the middle of London. 37 different community volunteers use it, primary schools, preschools, we have corporate event days where they pay us to come and work there. Cook and eat clubs, used by numerous groups. We also have an outdoor classroom which seats 32 people with Wi-Fi connected. An offshoot of this is our food co-op, where we sell low food, low cost fruit and vegetables to the local community. It's run by local volunteers. We give them cash handling training, food hygiene certificates, and we're also very proud that seven of them have now gone on to find employment. This is our harvest festival. Last week, thank God it's over, we just had our third Harvest Festival, which over 600 local residents came in. Everything is free, reflecting our local economic needs. It's free food, music, different events like smoothie bikes, uh, scarecrow making, face painting, just to name a few. It's a great avenue of getting people in the door. It's a picture of our second summer fair that we had last July. Again, free. We had over 3,000 people coming through the doors. Free barbecue, free fairground rides many of the things that our kids have never experienced. We also collaborated with a local music promoter. I wish I'd heard that they were so famous, we definitely would increase the security. <laughs> That's our heads so we're in there talking to the crowd. When I started, there was no community events at Phoenix, so we felt we did things like healthy living evenings, we did a Taste the World evening where we asked 20 of our different parents to cook food from the national dish and taste it to the local community. We just did a community dinner, which I'm really proud of. We offered 200 people with their families to experience a three-course silver surface dinner along with their children. It was a great success. With some affair, I've already spoke about. So what's the impact of all this? Well, about over 5,500 people are coming through our doors at just events this year. And after pre- and post-evaluations, 95% of those said they saw Phoenix in a completely different light than they did before. Again, it's establishing Phoenix as a community hub is really important. So lettings. You're probably wondering why I'm talking about lettings. Well, lettings are a great avenue for community engagement. Currently, our schools only shut three days out of the year. It's a great avenue for income. We have over 38 different groups coming in to use it. For a Polish school on Saturday, over 400 kids, to a Tai Chi of over 20 kids. It's a way of getting more also through the door. The Safe Holiday Programme, we started that about a year and a half ago in collaboration with the Met Police. We wanted to run a four-week free summer scheme. We wanted to create partnerships, not service providers. And due to this huge success, we've obtained funding for this for every holiday. We also offered coaching courses such as Level 1 Referee and it's applied learning in action again. So what's the impact of all of this? Well, we wanted our kids to experience things they've never done before, such as circus skills, you can see, BMX biking. 
We've had 9,000 visits so far, equating to 875 children experiencing different activities. 98% of those said they want to come back, and 100% of our parents said they felt it was an invaluable call. So what does all of this cost, you're wondering? This year we brought in £125,000 due to funding, and it also equates to another 125 for free tutors and coaches. Lettings, as I spoke about, after cost has brought us in £89,000, and all of this is not budgeted, it goes straight back into our department to fund all of our activities. So the impact again of all of this, we're currently 285 adults are using our facilities at the moment, 17 have gone on to find employment, 4,500 have also done different types of courses already this year, and including with lettings, it's almost 57,000 people are coming through the door of Phoenix, which they never would have done before. So the future. I was lucky enough in my fellowship to hire another member of staff, which I'll head as soon to extend our contract. We're currently setting up a charity to further our funding opportunities. We've just federated with a local primary school, which is going to give us even more access to local people. Our residence committee meetings and community newsletters have been a huge success, involving all of our residents in everything that we're doing. So, 16 years ago, Phoenix High School, according to the Daily Mirror, was the worst school in the country. I stand here today that we've got number one CBA in the country. But none of this would have been possible without the backing of our head, Sir William Atkinson, and my boss, Gary McMillan, sitting over there. But after everything that we do, I'm still constantly told that we're not doing enough. Thank you for listening to me.